All right. Hi, everybody. My name is Robert Kovac, and I'm going to talk about Transformer today. So if you like 60s B-movies, stay in the talk. <laughs> so let's start from the beginning. Personal fabrication has been used, traditionally to use, hands to print hand-sized objects. While large-scale digital fabrication is still the privilege of industry. And that's because of two obvious limitations, that the print volume and printing time doesn't scale very well with this printing size just because of the fact that the, that the printer always has to encompass the printed object. And the more layers we want to print, the printing time goes up and up and up. So to overcome this limitation, we came up with the project TrustFab, where we combined ready-made objects like plastic bottles with the relatively small 3D printed hubs connector pieces. And this allowed us to print much, much larger objects than the printing volume of the printer itself. But as you see, this chair holds me, and I weighed 72 kilograms, and this chair had to be designed for that. And when creating these large objects, the, the design objective to afford these large forces. So for that, we have created an editor which enables us to handle these forces just by the nature of the structure. It looks like a, this chair is made of lines, but actually it's made of volumetric primitives, which are inherently trusses, miniature trusses, like the tetrahedra and the octahedra. So everything what we create is a stable, rigid object. And additionally, the software also verifies the forces. So we can create a bridge, which can hold a person's weight, and we can, we can tell that in advance. But what today I want to talk about is how to make large moving objects, like the dinosaur that you have seen a minute ago in the video. So let me show you the basic single cell of this dinosaur. This is the simplest kinematic primitive. It's a tetrahedra where one edge is exchanged with a linear actuator. And then it moves. So in this way, we can create deforming objects, deforming trusses. And this concept is called variable geometry, variable geometry trusses. But what happens if we would move this much faster? Like here. You see, this tips over. So here, our static analysis would massively fail. What happens here is when we are accelerating this object, it builds up inner shell force, and that's why it tips over. So what we need here is a dynamic analysis. We need to deal with this. We need to design these objects for inner shell forces. And that is exactly what Transformer, Transformer is about. It's a system which helps users to visualize to predict these forces and to make the design withstand the inertial forces appearing during the design. So let me show you quickly how this, how transformers deal with these forces. First, this, uh, if when, at the moment when we place an actuator in the structure, this would now move. What the system does is it runs the physics simulation in the background and checks if it, if it uh, collides with any of the uh, limit, uh, physical limits. So if, it would, if the object would tip over, it would warn the user. If it would break because of self-collision, it would warn the user or hitting the ground, and so on. After this static check, user is offered with an animation timeline to make to create an animation for the object. 
what you see here, the, the blue line represents the position of the actuator as it is moving out, in and out. Here, as you see first, it goes up, down, up. So a moment later, before it changes the direction, that's the moment where the highest acceleration is happening in the structure, and you see the forces are quite high. And just a second after, the, the dinosaur is broken. So what happened here, that the inertial forces are, were exceeding the limits what these joints, 3D printed parts can hold, and because of the actuation was too fast. And at this point, Transformer, the software system, comes in to help the user with the design. It offers to fix the animation via two means. First, it can reduce the speed of this animation timeline what the user created until the point when, in the, when the structure would withstand the inertial forces which are occurring. Or second way is to limit the motion range of the actuator so to so to limit the amplitude, and in the same way, the structure would be safe to send the, the reduced inertial forces. And in this way, user goes on, creates the animation for all the actuators in the structure, and we can be safe that the structure can be fabricated. All right, but this structure might be a little bit complicated to construct for the first time, so for a novice user. So let me, let me show you the building elements. How is this actually constructed? So we took the, our old concept of building on trusses. The tetrahedra is the simplest primitive. When we exchange one edge with a linear actuator, we get a moving primitive that we can build into our model. This is simple and straightforward. However, the, the less intuitive question for us was to what to put at these points, at the node points, which now need to hinge around. And in the simulation, it's easy. They are simulated as ball joints, and they just work fine. However, in physical reality, they cannot be produced as ball, as ball joints because they just connecting multiple edges at the same point and that's physically impossible. So this is how it looks like in our rendition. It's a bit more complicated than just a simple hinge. So we took on this concept of spherical joint mechanisms from Boscher et al. They came up with this special design where the where multiple axes can be connected around the same point, and they offer, they offer kind of the same functionality as ball joints with somewhat limited range of motion, but it's still uh, perfectly fine for our structures. And on the right side, what you see is the Transformers rendition of this joint, which is adapted for 3D printing. And as you see, it, it consists of many different elements. So we wrote a little script which runs through, checks the structure for for where should these hinges go, what, what's the configuration, and it generates them automatically for the actual node point. And this is how it look, would look like how it looks like for the middle actuator, the middle point of the of the T-Rex model, where eight edges are connected at the same node point. So now that we know how these structures physically function, let's see how we design these objects. So user starts the design with creating the shape of the object and in a static manner, just like in the old truss fab. So everything what we create is a truss. And now the simplest way to bring motion to this is to turn one edge into an actuator. So the most straightforward tool is to use to click on the edge and turn it into an actuator. And what, we, what happens, the structure now can move. Those, need, those points are simulated as ball joints, and we can verify if the motion is the right one, what we want it to achieve. However, it might be hard to tell in this example 
that placing the actuator there where it was placed, maybe I can play it again, that that actuator will cause that the mouth of the T-Rex will open. It's very unintuitive. So to help users with design, we came up with the actuator, automatic actuator t placement tool where users only have to demonstrate the movement. So they click on, pull on any of the node points of the structure, and the system responds with placing one actuator at the right point in the, in the design. In, the, in this case, there, down, in the body of the, of the T-Rex. And, and the way how this works is a very simple algorithm. It just runs through all of the edges of the model, replaces them with one actuator, and tries to move it. It happens all in the background, and measures the distance of the desired, uh, me measures the distance from the desired point target point where it wanted to move. Of course, for more, most of the actuators what we place there, it would make, it will, this will make, make no sense. But eventually it will find the point which brings us the, to the closest, closest to the target position. And there's a third way. User can create these, these kinematic assemblies using primitives. So we came up with a number of these primitives. User can create their own. They they are very they come very handy when we when we need to use them multiple times. Like for example, for creating our spider bug primitive uh, model, where we use this type of primitive, which is essentially two tetrahedra connected to each other, and they are rotated by 120 degrees, so they can move in two directions. So we create the body of the spider and just click this primitive six times around and the design is essentially done. Or on the example of the motorbike, we used again a primitive which, con which consists of two tetrahedra but connected with uh, only at uh, one single edge which hinges, which creates a hinge around one axis, and that's the axis of the rotation of the steering wheel of the motorbike, what you have seen in the video. All right. And then yet, in the end, I would also like to talk about the forces again how we validated this, our system gives us reliable results. So we compared, we wanted to compare the simulated results with uh, what we could measure in real, real life. So we took the element in the T-Rex model which has the most compression, the highest forces, and that's the tool tip of the model down there and we logged all the force values while actuating the model. And we did the same with the real prototype. We exchanged that edge with a modified edge uh, equipped with the force measurement device and also logged those values. And after running this simple test, we got these results where the green line is the measured and the black line is the simulated. So what we see, they are roughly matching with each other. The only difference is this jittering of the real measurement, which is unsurprising if we know that the physical prototype consists of, the hinges are consisting of multiple pieces, they are screwed together, while the simulated model, model is, is approximated with ball joints, so it moves much smoother. So with this, we, we verify that actually this physics simulation, we use a Newton, library, Newton Dynamics library plugged into SketchUp, and this can give us realistic results good enough to predict the behavior of the model. And we can be safe to fabricate. All right, at the end, I would like to conclude that 
with that, the transformer is an end-to-end -end system that allows users to design these large kinetic objects. But first of all, to design for the occurring inertial forces. And this project is one of the, the, the last in my line of exploration in the direction of prototyping and designing large objects. The first was presented at WIS 2015 Protopiper, where, which was helping users to, uh, to sketch large-scale objects. Then with TrustFab, we enabled non-engineers to create large-scale architectural size objects. And now with Transformer to create large kinetic moving objects. And at the end, I would like to thank all my co-authors. This was a wonderful team working on this project with my PhD colleagues, Alexandra and Pedro, and the students from HPI, and to my advisor, Patrick Baudish. And I'm happy to, to take your questions. Dan Ashbrook, University of Copenhagen. This is, as usual, super cool stuff. Um, I'm curious about uh, replacing the soda bottles with other objects. Um, how much work is that to change out soda bottles for some other kind of bottle? Or maybe if I took all the chairs in this room and I wanted to make a large kinetic sculpture out of them, um, like Yeah, it's absolutely possible. And the only change what we would have to make is to to redesign the connection piece between the 3D printed part and the bottle itself. Mm -hmm. So if that connector piece is changed, it can, it can be accommodated also to steel beams, and mm -hmm. we can build with steel. How much do you have to know about the physical properties of the object you're building with? Uh, so on the level of the physical simulation, we would have also to change the weight mm -hmm. of these beams to adapt and the elasticity. So with that, this, these changes, it would be absolutely possible to, to design steel or other objects. Good. I look forward to building a giant dinosaur out of chairs then. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Hello, um, Aaron Quigley from the University of St. Andrews. I was wondering, I was thinking of this for kinetic buildings. So the idea of basically building structures that could respond like opening doors or opening vents putting covers on top of these types of objects for, let's say, emergency relief or disaster relief. And then my serious question, given the amount of waste that is out there, would you have a design recommendation to Coca-Cola as to what they should do to their bottles to make them more robust for using in these types <laughs> of systems? It's a serious question. The, actually? Yeah, so what, what would you do? Like, how could you make the structure more robust so it's not waste, but it's actually building material? So one way to, have to, to make these bottle structures much stronger is if we inflate the bottles, what we don't do here. So with that, actually, we can maybe reach even 10 times stronger constructions. But we need a system for inflating the bottles. Other than that, of course, if we, if we produce stronger bottles, then they are actually more waste for the environment because they mm -hmm. need more material. On the other hand, we can build with them. Um, yeah, it's a, okay. it's a question to, to discuss. Thank you. Uh, quick one, John Luca, University of Sussex. How did you come up with the primitives? You mean the, this moving uh, primitives? No, the basic, the basic, the basic shapes that you showed us. Yeah, those were kind of almost given. So we built our trust web project with the tetrahedra and octahedra. They are just the, the simplest rigid primitives which, can, which we can find. So there is nothing simpler than them. And just placing one actuator into them is, was very straightforward to do. And that's what we experimented with. Of course, we could create more complex primitives from a dodecahedra or other stable primitives, which would make the design more rich, also more complicated. Yeah, good, good point. 
Okay, one last question while the next speaker is setting up. Go ahead and set up. Hello. Uh, yes, Nakanish from Keio University. Uh, thanks for great talk. And uh, I'm very interested in this uh, system, and uh, especially in the cattle. And uh, the pet bottle will be, uh, uh, the size will, the popular, uh, uh, the size of the most popular uh, pet bottle uh, di differs from country. Maybe Japanese pet bottle will be a real different size. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. are all, all different, I agree. Yeah. So uh, we have to modify uh, your cattle system, and is it available uh, for uh, all over the world? Yeah, yeah, I was, I was not talking about these details because we covered this in the previous project of TrustFab, where we have uh, run uh, physical testing, fracture testing on bottles. So every time when we, when we use a new bottle type, they have to be tested, and then those values need to be fed into the software to design with those, those limitations. Thank you very much. Let's thank our speaker one more time.